Jace, thank you so much for joining us once again, brother. Always good to see your smiling face. Thanks, Pete. Same, same. It's uh, yeah, it's great to be here. Thanks very much for having me. And we were just discussing off off camera before or offline that um, you were just outside and you had the palm trees around and and the shift in weather. I mean, we're we're three or four hours away from each other by car, and the same thing happened here this morning. Just this this amazing shift in the weather pattern, and. And I want to talk to you about that, the, the movement and how these things, how we can take notice of, of, of our external to potentially give us a little bit more clarity or maybe even more confusion about our internal world. Yeah. Because so, yeah. we're, we're, uh, we're, we're seeing that so much at the moment. We're seeing these wild changes happening all around us. And, you know, I, I always remember the, the old saying about the bamboo, be like bamboo, you know where you can just sort of flow with it instead of it it's snapping you but um i'll let hey, you Pete, take over so just before you go there's just there's a there's a lot of feedback coming through it's there. like it's like a loose like a loose core it might be it might be due to the weather <laughs> let me it could be my charger we'll start it That is that any better now? One, two, three, one, two, yeah. three. One, I'll two, say it three. Again. one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, it's like a, it's at the end of some of your words. It's like it, it goes a little bit, uh, you know, like um, electronic. All, all the bits in and out and see how we go. One, two, three, one, two, three. Still got the same problem? Yeah, I don't know what, it, um, let me make sure it's not something this end. I'm just gonna, cause it's definitely coming through when you're speaking, but it's. Um, um, if you I'm disconnect just gonna... your headphones, is it still gonna come through the computer audio? One, two, three, one, two, three. Jace, thank you so much for joining us again, brother. Great to see your smiling face once again. Thanks, Pete. Great to be here. And uh, yeah, thanks again for having me. It's... See where we go. Well, we were just outside that we you had to move inside because of the weather change. And, um, and it's interesting because we're three or four hours apart by car and the same thing happened here. Just this massive weather change. I was in the sauna, I hopped out. And before when I was in the sauna, it was this beautiful morning with the uh, sun coming in. And as I was hopping out and had the shower before our chat, I could just feel the energy of, of, of the whole environment just, just change in such a dramatic way. Not Nothing stormy or anything, but it just felt like the wind just changed 180 degrees. And, oh, I just got goosebumps. It's doing it again. Um, and it's amazing when you get to witness these sort of, these big shifts and how it can, I don't want to say alter your mood, but it could really bring you into the present to, to I don't even know the words to use here, but um, nearly give you an opportunity to appreciate the ever-changing moments in which we have. And, and I, I guess I wanted to talk to you about that with so much going on at the moment so much going on so much movement so much what some would perceive chaos but perhaps it is actually isn't chaotic it's just the perception in which we are viewing it from mm. yeah there's a couple of things um the thing you bring up about the weather is a conversation i'd love to have at some stage because it's i won't go into it now but the weather itself for, for our particular capacity to realize that, that we have the ability to change it, that, that it is not something that is set, that it is not something that determines us, but that comes into the same part as what we're talking about with presence. And, and I suppose what I've learned over time is, is how much courage it takes to actually start to 
not just believe in something and, and even move towards it, but but actually start to act upon something only you can see and that only you're aware of. And for me, that's what's happening a lot in the world at the moment where individuals are seeing things in very different ways to people that they once loved and, you know, love them and that they've grown so close to. And that there's a, there's a real you know, an inevitable courage that becomes all of us. And for some of us, that's the choice to, to die and to not be here. And, and for others, you know, which that can be a slow, long-term decision and, you know, supported by the way we eat or the way we speak to ourselves or the way in which we relate to our own life. But there's a greater courage that I think comes in that moment of presence in what you're saying, like the goosebumps that may come at a particular time where, Someone might just say, well, the wind just changed. But for you, the courage to actually see something far more than that, not based upon, you know, a momentary awareness, but, but a culmination of what you start to come to accept about what is real in your life. And the interesting thing for, for most of us is we have this attachment in our life and this experience in our life of, um, of trauma. And, you know, the challenges and the difficulty and the lack of grace that we have at times moving through trauma is because we, we just don't understand it. But what, what trauma does as a, as a significant part of our life, it brings us into presence and ultimately bringing us into presence is pulling all of our dispersed, disowned parts into one space at, at any moment. And, and for many of us, when we start to do this, we can experience things like anxiety. We can experience things like goosebumps because it's such a contrast and a difference to the diluted form that we're maintaining of our own self in life to, to keep us at a level where we are not over impressing upon anyone else, where we're not seeming to be arrogant because we're showing more of what we are and showing our own brilliance where people choose to, to not. You know, and it's a difficult space for us to traverse. So we're so used to keeping ourselves accepted by others. But I'd say what's happening a lot at the moment is people have got to a point with this restriction that they've held within themselves, this trauma that, that's been maintained, this presence that they've only experienced through great pain. People are looking to change that and start to have presence in a place of their own significance and brilliance, which is a very challenging space to move into because it, it's unique and different and it can only be, within our trauma, we, we can be common with each other. We have things to share, we can be accepted. But in our own individual brilliance, we are not common. We, we are completely individualized and independent. And what we see and what we do is so different to what anyone else may ever do. And it takes a significant amount of courage. And sometimes that courage is in the fact of those people closest to us questioning us, pulling us apart, doubting us because of what it is that we reflect in them. And for some of them, it's because they believe they want to keep us safe. You know, don't you, everything might fall apart. Things might not go your way. I heard what happened to other people. Look, look, just stay, stay with us. Ultimately, it's this significance of presence within our own self that the saying is, is being caught up in trauma. And whenever we become present, whenever we start to feel all of what we are, those moments where we have maybe have been downtrodden, abused, you know, tormented in some way in our life as we perceived it. That's where a confusion comes that stops us moving into the, the significance of our own power because our majority of experiences of being present is when we've been so alerted and so rushed with adrenaline that we become so in the moment, but it's because of most often the horror that we've experienced. And that can be then transported across because other people can speak of the same. I think what's happening in the, in the world at the moment is people are starting to find a courage and there is, through that courage, there is a great toxicity that has to be released that's been held on for such a long period of time in, in the denial of, of what we are. And, yeah, I, I, I can't speak highly enough or put the words enough to the concept of presence and what it requires within each of us to be able to maintain that towards our own journey. And that's... Um, yeah, that, that to me is, I don't really have a, a significant a point here to make it, just the fact of when we become into our own space, 
the challenge for ourselves is to maintain the courage to to follow a path that we've never walked down before. And, and that's, um, you know, like, like what you said with the weather. To be able to see that as you see it, see that as I see it, and to be able to allow that to be true, that, that's a real genuine level of sovereignty. It's, it's not sovereignty, it's not something that's on a piece of paper, but it's in that moment where we choose to be independent of what anyone else may think of us, what anyone else may suggest of us, but and whatever anyone else has determined to be laws of this world or existence or physics, but where we start to determine them for ourselves, where we start to allow ourselves to imagine what we are and allow our imagination to be the truth rather than some daydream that we've been led to believe, you know, by, by organised society that, that exists these days. It's, um, it's not by mistake that the very impetus of the schooling system's first determination was to dilute and destroy imagination. Hmm. Hmm. Where do we go from here, my friend? I'm like, uh, uh, I was, I was yeah. in, the, in, in the present moment listening to it all and um, I was just taking it in. Usually I'm, I'm making notes of, of the next question that I could ask with what you've been saying or, or my guests are saying. And um, interesting, because I was talking to, the, to this about Nick, talking about this to Nick the other day, talking about uh, interviewing. And we do listen to other people that interview. And it's interesting how we bring our own stories into the dialogue. And it's something I'm cautious of, but I do a lot when I feel like it's, it's appropriate because I feel like these interactions when I am doing this with, with the guests like yourself, I know part of this or a large part of it is for the viewers and listeners, but I also know equally that a large part of this is for myself, that this is the perfect place for me to be right now, right here doing this interview. And regardless of how other people perceive this conversation, and it's so funny because I was thinking about this while, while you were talking, I was in the moment I was thinking when you're talking about creating as sort of our own reality or our own perception in, in this universe or, or this world. I was like, oh, I wonder how many people are going to understand what Jason actually means there. I'm like, yeah, I've got to let that go. I've got to let that go. I've got to let that go. Do I understand what Jason is saying here? Do I understand? Can I feel what Jason is saying? I'm like, yes, I do. So there's, there's, I'm bringing myself in to this conversation here because I, f I have a, a feeling that I represent what a lot of people are trying to do at the moment is representing and, and bringing different voices into their reality to share with their friends, their family, their loved ones, for them to see a different pathway or, or a different looking through the kaleidoscope to see something completely different than what they've believed in for all their lives and like Morpheus in the Matrix says you know it's it's the red pill or the blue pill and part of this journey is continuing to eat that red pill <laughs> to a degree which perhaps distances us from others that haven't and I know that can be very very challenging and, and and i'll just I'm, I'm going to keep going with my rant here even though I'm, I'm trying to make a point not to i was reading something this morning while i was having the sauna and it was these modeling universe or these universities in australia i read two different stories in the mainstream paper today two different papers two different university models talking about and they both had 2022 even with the percentage of people vaccinated and they talk about 80 or 90% is still saying that we will still need to be wearing masks pretty much for the rest of eternity and that lockdowns will still continue probably 50% of the time. 
and and I'm reading that and it's been 18, 19 months and I haven't worn a mask once. I haven't complied with anything. And and I had this thought, I thought, well, I wonder if like in 10 years time, I'm still out there not wearing a mask, just going about my day-to-day -day life. And how many jabs other people may have had in that time? You know, would they be up to their 20th? Will I be in a containment? quarantine camp but by that in 10 years time will I forcibly be held down and and injected by a group of people and it's so fascinating because I'm having these these thoughts and the, the imagination as you call it it's like fuck this is this is this is actually wild this is wild at the moment and part of me is really excited about it like Where's it going to go? How will I navigate this? Do I have to navigate this? Or is it all an illusion? What's going to happen to the people that continually get jabbed and wear a mask and continually lock themselves down and, and so on and so forth? And it brings up a lot of emotion for me. You know, it brings sadness, it brings anger, it brings joy that, this is actually happening for a greater, a greater good. And that's my, that's my, that's my chat there. And I, and I feel like the thing that really keeps me grounded is, is doing, having these conversations with, with yourself, you know, and I'm so grateful that you said, can we do a series of this? Because I feel like for me as well, it's just like, okay, we're going on this journey together. Jace is going to enlighten uh, and share some wisdom that'll keep me and perhaps others that are listening or watching this moving forward with with grace with humility with curiosity with with perhaps letting go of more toxicity so i don't know where you want to take that but i just felt like mm. i needed to share that I, I love i love your answer i love where they go it's um it's what i think makes this space so special that you've created um and uh, yesterday through a you know a fun set of circumstances we we acquired a boat that we were looking at buying and suddenly the person got so angry that we're dealing with people he said if you can get a tow truck here you can have it and you know that story sort of went forward and led ourselves yesterday that um we live in a bit of land and I don't find many times or reasons to leave that except the beach and a few other things. But um, we went to a shop yesterday um, called Whitworth, which was a boating supplies. And, and I'd had this sense when I got told about first, I don't want to go, that doesn't feel right, I'll go somewhere else. Anyway, we found ourselves going there yesterday and we're heavily confronted. And it's the first time it's happened to me. I've, I've, I've seen other people be confronted, but it's a bit of that, you know, I'm, I'm very prepared in how to deal with the way the world is at the moment. I'm prepared to deal with what the worst case scenario may be. And so, and I found myself not having been confronted by anyone trying to enforce any of their restrictions, mandates or anything upon me. But yesterday, that was different. And I had a, a gentleman that was obviously very tense and, and uptight and um, went into his shop and tended to spend a, a bit of money. And... I said, you know, I've called earlier about this and, you know, I'd want to find out, do you have a mask? No, no, I, no, I don't. I don't wear them. Um, they're, down, they're down that aisle. I was like, well, wait a second. Uh, are, you, are you here to enforce mask mandates? Are you here to offer a service as an organisation? Because I thought that's what business was about, that you were offering a service to me. But the way you've spoken to me, what, why would I want to invest in more of what you're providing? And anyway... He, he got, he was quite tense. I said, if you want me to leave, I'll leave. I've got no, no problems leaving. There's plenty of other places I can go. But the thing for me is if we keep knowing things our own self and keep researching what we already know, the separation that we start to see is because of what we believe rather than, to me, all of life is about getting an understanding. And understanding, to me, there's a real difference here between knowing and understanding. And knowing is a bit of a new age catch cry that I'm in my knowing or I've got my knowing. And, you know, that there's a whole 
explain the words around it, but it all comes from the root word um, to know. And, and science as a, as a basis, as its words, is to know as well. Now, the thing is here to understanding is all about, for me, creating a foundation upon which I'm able to move forward from. Understanding is that point where I'm now able to take action, whereas knowing is about the conversation. It's something I can continue to perpetuate in avoidance of action. I know this and I know it to be true and it's a knowing I have. Well, great. Well, well that is not demonstrated until you actually allow yourself in an embodied way to act upon that, whether that's to take no action or whether that's to move forward with great force. But it's in understanding, and what I'm saying is here is the time that we can invest in understanding what is opposing us or what we oppose is where we allow ourselves to move forward much more freely. But to, to get into a place where we continue to keep knowing what we know and confirming what we know, and there's that person saying that, and yep, that's right, and they're, they're undermining that, they're censoring this, they're doing all of those things. Uh, yesterday, I took it as a great opportunity in, in a very tense environment. I mean, this guy didn't want to talk at all, but to, to want to understand, but to genuinely want to understand, not to pull apart what he was saying, I wanted to understand why he was like that, what, what caused him to see it that way. And that type of conversation becomes, to me, most enlightening, more enlightening than what I'll ever find, you know, zooming off into the universe and finding about my, my own creation and existence being able to understand the very interaction that I can have with someone else that has a completely opposing view that brings an absolute contrast to my life. I don't need to agree with them, but to come to a level of understanding allows me to move forward because in our lives, to the degree that we're not present of things, that becomes our restriction. That becomes our resistance. So, for example, if, if we are, you know, as a whole, you know, uh, let's say, I don't know, I'm just thinking of a dinner plate. But we're only aware of that small morsel in the middle of it. So 90% of it to us, we're not present to, we're not aware of. That 10% that we're focused on, that we've idolised of what we are, as we intend to just take ownership for that small part, we are putting an amount of energy in that is moving that 10% forward, but we're carrying this 90% of resistance for all the things that we don't understand. And anyone taking the time to look into their life that whenever they've come to a moment of understanding where it wasn't previously there, automatically they get momentum. They get progression. And, and a most simple thing, I just observe this in kids who hated maths and suddenly understand it, understood how to do, you know, what X times X times X times F was. And they go, suddenly there was this moment, oh, give me more. Like, you know, have you got any, can we do another? Well, let's do another. There's this excitement that comes in a broken relationship when people are just, you know, I'm not talking to them ever again, what they did, I cannot get past. And, you know, these, when those two people get together in the humility just to understand each other, oh, I never thought you should, I, I always thought this. And suddenly, again, life and movement comes into that particular space. What, what we've got to be cautious of at the moment as individuals so that we don't find ourselves becoming restricted by our own choices is to not choose to understand the very thing that opposes. Because once we understand that, then we elevate. But many of us, when we're, you know, focused on, especially in conscious circles and in spiritual circles, we're looking for this higher, pure state of existence. And ultimately in doing that, we become attached to it. And many people in space that, you know, I've connected to my higher self. My higher self is my truth. My, my prime, well, whatever anyone wants to give a label towards that. The, the thing is, in, in anything that we feel that we need to possess or that we elevate above ourselves, it, it becomes the very manipulation of what we are to not be able to sit in our own disconnection. And, and that to me is one of the most liberating things to do with when I, when, one of the parts where we work with people is when we get them to sit in their disconnection deliberately after being able to really connect to the source of what they are, to sit in their disconnection by choice is where people learn so much about who they are. Because why, why consciously, as where most people don't want to do that because they're aspiring to be right, not aspiring to be true. So when we're aspiring to be right, we have to deny everything else that is wrong. And until we actually come to understand that, that everything that we're, we're experiencing is a dance, 
And it's that dance requires all of those parts to be present in order to progress forward. For many of us, we're going to find ourselves <clears throat> in this ridiculous concept that has been created for us of good and bad, r- right and wrong, you know, the evil and, and the hero. And, and that, that doesn't need to happen in our experience out into the world, but that can happen just with our own self. You know, and how we can start to embody and have opportunity to, to express and to expose those things within us that are, that are ugly. And we, we had a conversation last night um, with a group of people and it was speaking to what is ugly to me and, and trying to find a way to expose that in itself. It's, it's, a, it's a word that, that many of us don't look to embrace, but it was one of the most powerful conversations I've been a part of for some time because... It is something that people don't look into and where you don't see the beauty in something. Even, even the word, the sound of the word ugly is, is ugly to even say. You know, it's, um, but what, what I'm saying, there's a great opportunity at the moment to understand what we don't understand, what we presume we already know. And, and you might have seen this, and I, and I know I've even, not even, of course, I've, I've done it myself on a number of occasions, is that when we feel that we're waking up, when we feel we're becoming more conscious, to observe people who are not doesn't provide any space for them to move into, except it maintains us stuck in our own position of righteousness. What becomes challenging is that when we wake up, is then where do we go? Because for me, at the basis of what I've seen in, and I, and I haven't seen any evidence where this is not the case, and I'm talking from, from world leaders down to, you know, mums and dads, to, to anyone and everyone, the, the, the challenge that is consistent for all of us is accepting how significant that we are. And it's that particular challenge that once we start to get to that place of where we feel we're awake or we've got it or we know what's happening, well, then what do we do? What is the, the right way to move forward? How do I now make this change? You know, sometimes the burden of wisdom is to, to know and to understand all of these things, but then what to do? Because that's where courage comes. And courage to me is one of the most, well, it's essential for all other experiences of life if we want to live truly and we want to live freely. And to me, that, that courage, as I suppose I was saying before, is courage is to, be able to, is to be able to act upon what only you can see, not, not what other people determine to be courageous, but act upon what only is true, what is only evident, what is only available to you in your awareness. And I think that that's a really important part at this particular time is just to realise and to start to come to understand where other people are at rather than judge them for where you presume them to be when you're being attacked. To understand where they're coming from. I mean, you don't need to do this with every single person, but what I'm saying is that we can start to discern the people that are in our own environment. If we can actually listen to understand without listening, and it's a difficult thing to do, but without listening to go, no, nah, you're wrong there. No, you're ignorant. No, no, you, you haven't you haven't read up on this, you don't know that. It's none of us really know. None of us have a have an understanding except for what we are doing at this particular moment, moment and the choice that we continue to take moving through that will be determined again by our own self. So, yeah, that's. Mm. Yeah, it was interesting. The other day I had, I had a uh, journalist from a large TV network wanting to do a, um, an hour documentary on me. Um, and, and it was strange because they wanted to hear my side of the story. And last year, as you know, I went on to 60 Minutes and, and shared some information to that. And, and I keep going back into that, that into that mainstream sort of narrative, like I mentioned before, I was reading what every day I just have a, a peruse through the mainstream media outlets to see where where they're at so to speak and and what they're what they're putting out there into the world and 
It's like, fuck, I've been invited back into that world again. What, what, have I got unfinished business in there? And, and it, it came to me when I was speaking to this journalist. I said, I said, I don't need to tell my side of the story. And he, he goes, but, but people, we want to give you a, a, a chance to, to, um, to explain that you're not a neo-Nazi or this. And I said, I don't really need to do that. I said it just, it, it, I said, and I've said this on a podcast recently, I said it, it, I said, so do I need to go onto a mainstream news channel and explain to everybody what I'm not? Like, where, where does that start and where does that end? Because to explain that I'm not a neo-Nazi, which I'm not, what's next? What's after that? I said, it, it doesn't make any sense to me that I would have to defend something that I'm not. And, and I politely declined. I said, oh, maybe, maybe in a year we can revisit this. We'll see where the world is at. I said, but, but again, it won't be me defending myself. I'm happy to have an intelligent conversation with an intelligent journalist that would like to answer some, some hard hitting questions. I said, at the moment, it doesn't seem to be anybody like that in this country. I said, maybe it'll be you. I said, there's a great opportunity at the moment for somebody with integrity to stand up in the mainstream media space. And yeah, as you said, stepping forward with courage and I got off that phone call, I was like, was that an opportunity for me to step into courage again? But it felt like I've done that. How many more times do I need to keep doing that? Is it, is it, a, is it a trap? Is it my ego bringing me back into there to prove that I'm right? And, and, it was, and it was, it's such an interesting game at the moment, such an interesting mm. dance at the moment. Mm. And, and I was in a store two days ago and I was standing next to a gentleman with a mask on, an elder gentleman, and I didn't have a mask on. And I could feel his uncomfortableness by me being in that store, smiling and conversing with the shop owners. And, but I could feel this energy next to me of, how can you be in here without a mask? Like, it, it was so bizarre. And, I, and, I, and I, I didn't know where to go with it, whether just to keep smiling and and continuing my journey in my reality or having a conversation with this guy to see where he's at. And, and it's such a fascinating time. It's, it's, it's such a fascinating time. Because mm -hmm. when I was in there, I was like, two years ago, could you, could you even imagine, because we about imagination, could you imagine a scenario like this where I'd be standing next to someone and they'd be, and they'd be, covered up fearful of somebody standing next to them that is in my perception a happy healthy vibrant exuding love and connection that that would repel somebody because that's what the feeling i was getting it's like this guy's repulsed by this <laughs> wow you know what can i do to 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 calm that person down without you know, I know what would have calmed them down, putting a mask on. But that just perpetuates or enables that 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 storyline. So mm -hmm. yeah. So so I'd I'd love for you to uh, go back into my my last conversation about where this may be heading, and for people, or should we not even think about where this is heading? Yeah. Um, to, to me, this is it's an opportunity to create, and I, and, I, and I feel when we start to think where it's heading, you know, we start to get caught up on what we should then be doing. And, you know, a, a great, I, I think for me, all expression 
and I believe all of us and as individuals, our life and our living and the living of everything is determined by its want and willingness to express itself. Now, and I'd say all expression also then seeks completion. And what I mean by that is that when something is truly expressing itself, it seeks completion, whether that's in a microsecond or whether that's over a lifetime, but it seeks completion. Um, what we've fallen into is this dance of opposites, which is what's created the ego. I mean, the, the ego has created this different set of opposites where uh, I would say in our, in our true expression like that there's no higher self and there's no ego. Those two things have been created by the existence of the ego, the existence of what some may call the devil and, and all of these type of machinations, which are, to me, a significant indoctrination of what doesn't exist. But the thing is, we have challenge in our expression, which is, which is what some people find difficult to, I suppose, navigate through. But within expression, we, we seek completion and allowing us to remove our attention from that particular space, moment, you know, expression that we're having in order to create a new one beyond that. Now, I'll give you an example of this is, is within my own life, if I feel incomplete in my life in what I'm expressing, I've got two options. One of them is that I can either move forward and create something that, that feels complete. And that completion is where I no longer, my attention is no longer required upon it. The other option I have in the restriction of my own movement is to suggest that if I feel incomplete, well, then I'm not capable. Then I'm no good. Then I start to justify why it's not possible for me to move forward. So an example of probably easier is to say that when we all go through in our own life and, and what's happening around us at the moment is people are releasing, they're purging in, in whatever form, you know, whether they're on either side of the coin, that there's a releasing that is occurring. Now, releasing can be quite cathartic. It can be, wow, you know, like that weight off my shoulders, I feel quite amazing and I've got to do that again. But the thing is, releasing itself is supported in its expression by creation. The only purpose to release is in order to create. If we are releasing but we're not creating, we then fall into this habit of continually releasing. What becomes the opposition of that is the fact that we need to keep finding problems to release. And ultimately, we, we have this great moment of freedom and, and, wow, this is amazing. But because we don't express into that, because we don't move through it, in order to perpetuate this temporary high that we experience, and, and it might be a very amazing and significant high, we then have to find more trauma. We have to find more problems. We have to find more difficulty in order to support this addiction that we created rather than a completion that would happen that when we release, we create space and the purpose of creating space is for me to then choose what I want to do in that space. Mm, interesting, because that's exactly how I felt after the 60 Minutes interview last year, is as soon as it, in it, and then after, as it was completed, it was this, this freedom. It was like, fuck, I stepped into the lion's den. I survived. And I actually think I did pretty good, you know, as far as maintaining my integrity in, in that, yeah. that what, what you would perceive as a, a grilling by a senior journalist. <laughs> and they know all the tricks of the, of the trade. Uh, and I yeah. came out of that, I went, eh, I've, I've done that. I faced that. I faced that fear because it was a little fear for me or a large fear at the time. Um, and and what I'm getting from you is when I was asked again to go back into the lion's den, I'm like, no, I've expressed myself. I've faced that fear. Now it would just be, it, it feels like it would just be, again, my ego going, oh, well, if I've done it once, I'll, I can do it again and I'll show them. And, and that went through my head when they were asking me, I was like, no, 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 that's, that's, that's not what I'm here to do anymore. I'm here to express myself in a different thing, again, to, to face a different fear, which is a different path that we're going on at the moment, which you know about. 
and we'll see how that how long that expression goes for and just for anybody listening the expression that that i'm stepping into at the moment is stepping out of the system to experience what that is like how how fully can i step out to experience that self-reliance and and even that part of me is like, oh, you're sort of running away from what's going on in the world. But I was heading that way anyway. anyway. And, and it's now, if you're going to do this, do it. But try not to get pulled back in or don't get pulled back into that matrix. And it's interesting because those invitations are coming back to take you out, back into that. So, yeah, it's interesting. Because as you said, once you express yourself or once you release, it gives you more opportunity to create, to imagine, to step forward. So sorry to interject. Mm, no, no, that's, but I think that's a really great thing that's as well that leads into, um, you know, like you said before, the universities and that, you know, there could be 50% of the time we're having lockdowns um, and those types of things. We've got an opportunity at the moment where we've been conditioned in this, you know, Monday to Friday, <clears throat> where we go through the week. So we can become weakened on the weekend. And, you know, all of, and it's the, this play that keeps happening out to us. We've got 40 hours within which we've got to do things. And if we don't, we feel guilty because we're not supposed to be, you know, we should be spending time with family and we've got to stop working. Working's a bad thing. We've got an opportunity at the moment to say, all right, change the playing field and not be one determined that's been determined for us. Like if I only had 50% of the time available to me, if I only had 20% of the time available to me each week, but I had to create something significant in my life, how would I do that? How would I operate? How, what would I need to change? What would I bring forward? How can I work less but create much more? How, how can I? And when we start to pose those questions of our own self, and like what you're saying is being prepared in life is when we start to look at not hoping that the reality will change, but instead actually looking at it from, well, this is what's being proposed. How do I prosper in that? How do I become more prominent in my own self? How, how do I start to create an example where that's actually a great thing? Well, well wait a second. What, what you mean we, and I think you maybe said in one other conversation we've had is, you know, a forced month or two off each year, you know, how, how great that can be for people. But it's, it's starting to look at things in a, in a different way where we don't need to be having these norms that are, but this is the way it is, but that's what we're going to have to do. But there's so many ways that, that we can look at the system that we're in and we can be restricted by it, or instead we can start to look at the system and understand it and then we can navigate our way through it. And... And this is where I suppose many of us get stuck in our own life as it starts to become so complex and so difficult. And we go, I'll just retreat to, to, where, to where I'm safe. But it's, um, you know, maybe that thing coming up with the TV is about just being complete and whole with, you know, being able to express yourself in, in a way and have the impact you want to have without the need to ever be concerned with mainstream media ever again. You know, how, how is it that I do that, that my, if required, that my voice is heard in that form. But there, there's, there's so much, I think, for when we start to consider where all of this is heading, it, it goes back to me, that eternal question of just the ability to be present with, with who and what I am at this moment. And, and that, that is, I would suggest, one of the most difficult things for all of us to do, not by force, not by trying to be present, but by eventually creating an environment and an understanding of what, what I would say of, of what the ego is, and I was talking before about being disconnected, is that when we can come to understand the very nature of our opposition, then we have the true choice on whether we actually are engaging in it or not, rather than in that, you know, that moment of where we're like, is this happening from here or is that happening from there? Because that's what's been reflected in the world around us. Do we listen to this scientist? Do we listen to that party? I've got some friends, and it's what is the source of information and to what degree 
have I been responsible enough to be able to determine and dictate that to myself where it is undeniable, where when I hear something and when I'm aware of it and I'm communicating and in contact with that, that no matter what comes up, I'll do it. If it means to leave my partner in this moment, if it means to move away from my children, if it means to do whatever it is that comes, that I am there and that I understand that because then I'm becoming truly responsible for myself. And to me, that, that, that's the first part of our own premise and the first part of our, our own responsibility as people is to determine what is my source of information? What, what is the truth that is coming to me? Not what I want to hear, but that particular information that I would suggest that people have in the richness of their own life can be determined by how many people can tell them what they don't want to hear but still main, maintain the friendship. How many people do we each have in our life that can come and say to us, you know, something that is very difficult and inconvenient to say, but can say it because there is a love that exists. I mean, that's a lot of this uh, synthetic love that, we you know, I'm so grateful for to have you in my life and blah, 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 blah. But without the capacity to be able to actually go, you know what, you can be a real asshole. You know what, you, you've got some real things that are going, and not coming from a point of judgment, but being able to share w- without it needing to be received, but just to express. And for, for many of us, I think that that particular capacity has been lost because we keep focusing on the light. We want the light to win. We want good to win. Because we become so absent to our own darkness, the darkness in the world has grown to become quite significant. And like anything that's ignored, it's going to continue to keep growing. The child that's ignored is going to keep Screaming out louder and louder and louder until you eventually stop and go, hey, wait, what what, what, what do you need? And that's what's happening, I'd say. Tell me about that, because in the spiritual movement and, and on Telegram, for instance, the social media that I'm on, I follow certain certain groups or certain people. And, and one, of the th- one of the common threads is that God has won, or we will win this, we need to fight this. And there's always these, these notions of winning. We have won, we're going to win. It's inevitable that, that this is a fight that we will win. And it never rings true to me. It, it never, yeah. because in my experiences, um, I'll take, uh, I'll use toad medicine as an example in that experience, which I, I believe is, is, a, is a huge gift for humanity to experience, or if you're, if you're up for it, is that there's, in that experience, which I believe is the absolute, there's equal light to dark and, and everything in between. It doesn't seem in, in that reality or those realities that there's any right or wrong, good or bad, black or white. There's just everything. And it's interesting because I'm getting uh, called back to explore that realm again after, after many years of not, not being in there. My, my intuition over the last few years, has, <laughs> the last two years has been being in this reality. And now I'm being called again to explore m- more of that reality that is absolutely everything. And I'm, I'm, I'm not 100% sure why I'm being called back to, to do ceremony, but I'm following my intuition into this, even though part of me is like, oh, fuck, <laughs> I've, 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 I've got to experience that again. Oh. That's that's a that's not a red pill. That's fucking every pill at once. That's a lot, and, mm. and I'm not recommending this for for anybody. But I, again, I'm listening to my intuition, and and I know there's there many different method methods to experience that. Whether it is breath work or meditation or just being here now. But for some reason, some of those psychedelic experiences are a um, sledgehammer. To the mm. ego so maybe that's why it's calling to me again <laughs> so, yeah oh, it's, uh... but but talk to me about that winning and the, mm. the, the light and god if you if you would like to share your yeah experience it's, with um, that. 
it's an interesting topic. I mean, I was brought up um, around a little bit of religion and was speaking in tongues at 15 years of age and all that stuff. But and not by curiosity more than anything else, but it's interesting um, that when you speak into this particular space, I had a lovely man that I've um, come to know who had a very colourful past from everything from jail and, and then into becoming a pastor and, you know, and all of this type of stuff. And I know in conversations with him about God can go into a deep space, but it still comes to a point where it very much offends him to suggest, not that he should do something else, but that there's something, that there may be a different relationship that exists there. And, and it's a very it's a very significant topic that, that you know, for, for many, many people. But one of the things he said to me is, I, I studied this deeply and I'm as, you know, as, as aware as anyone in, in regards to this particular book. But he said, one thing I don't understand is how to apply it through myself. You know, there's, I get the wisdom, I get the awareness, but how do I do that? So I think, and, and that's what, that's what creates this whole idea that there is a right way of doing things. And therefore, if there is a right way, there is going to be a winning. And ultimately, from a state of winning, is that people are sitting expecting other people to do something. Because the people that are suggesting that we're going to win are not aware of what, what, is it, what it is that's opposing. And ultimately, it's just if we can just start to see that everything that's happening around us in our own environment is happening because of the way we are with our own selves, that we continue to keep opposing what we are. We can continue to keep fighting against what we are. So there has to be some right way because there is a wrong way that didn't feel good and it's painful. I'm not going to look at it. And that darkness is going to remain there. And I'm going to have that like this shadow continually chasing me through my life that I just stay ahead of enough to enjoy my life to a degree that is acceptable. And what... What, what has been lost, I feel, in all of this is that capacity to be able to willingly go into the darkness. And, and maybe what you say with toad medicine is it can be extremely revealing and it can be quite a phenomenal experience. But, but it takes you into places that you haven't yet explored. It, it takes us away from, I think that, and this is maybe a, a challenge for, for some to see and accept until you actually start to bring attention to it. The greatest seductions that exist in people's lives is familiarity. You know, the, 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 the person who's being violently abused who goes back to that abuse because it's familiar. It's the only reason that that occurs because it gives them a sense of belonging. It gives them a sense of safety. And it's that familiarity that when we can start to see how familiarity has continued to dilute what we are. That's when we start to have these, again, these oppositions that exist, like winning, like losing, rather than coming to a particular understanding and a higher awareness that everything is coexisting. And when it does coexist, it all actually exists for the benefit of each other. And that's where our understanding comes in. But it's very important for, for many people on a spiritual journey to start to realize, am I tuning into what I'm tuning into because I want to be right? Am I tuning into because I want to take the right path? Am I, what, what, is the, what is the purpose and intention of me coming into this enlightened state? What am I actually wanting to achieve? Am I denying the fact of my own darkness? Because I would, I would suggest that in its most simple, the capacity for anyone to navigate the darkness is the most liberating thing that they'll ever find. And because it's in the true liberation of darkness that light becomes real, it becomes authentic. What most people are focusing in on is this synthetic light, these places of familiarity where they've already been, that the light that people are looking towards is light that shows where we already have been. It's what is already familiar to us. We don't need to liberate the light. Maybe we can embrace it, but we embrace it truly in its presence and its existence as it comes to be as we move through our own darkness, our own misunderstandings, our own unknowing. And for us to be able to do that is we need to be able to trust in something deep within our own self. And for me, one of the most important parts is becoming so extremely aware of our ego, not our higher self. 
But once you're aware of the ego and what it is, you can't help but default to be in a position of your own truth. The, the lack of awareness that we have of our opposition is the very thing that keeps us small, is the very thing that keeps us moving into a place where we've got to win because we're so fearful of losing. And the, the whole point I, I would suggest, if you already know that you had won, well, you wouldn't need to make that be known because you'd be reveling in it. So look, I go back to years ago when we were in a, an organisation and it was, there was sales and everything else that were involved in, in that particular space. And what was always interesting to me is people would have this most amazing result where they would, you know, exceed their expectations and make a, you know, a great amount of money, feel fulfilled in what they've been done and the effort they'd put in. And then they'd go out and celebrate. Like, you know, wow, you did amazing. Everyone, everyone loves you. You know, wow, look at, get a badge, get a certificate and, you know, and, and get completely blind drunk. And then, you know, people get to those particular places if they understood how to get there, they wouldn't need to celebrate it. Because if they understood what was actually required and what to cause them to get into their greatest expression, well, they'd continue to do more of it. The reason why people celebrate these particular things is because they don't understand how they got there. They take that momentary high and ultimately go down and level themselves back out to where it's acceptable to operate at rather than, again, exceeding and exceeding and exceeding and exceeding. It doesn't matter what, what the intentions of an organisation is. Anyone that starts to grow is going to be questioned by anything that's not growing. And, and, and ultimately, it'll be you know, justified from a political standpoint, from an ethical standpoint, from whatever it is that someone doesn't like. If something becomes more authentic, more organised in its expression of its own life, because it then reflects to others what it is that is truly denied within our own self. We, 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 we are energetic and we are physical. If we want to deny that, we'll become the very opposition of our own self. We, we can't, and that's why, you know, things like vaccines and a whole range of other things that are going on in the world become a graceful opportunity for people to maintain the denial of what they are, to maintain an opportunity to gracefully exit because in our own acceptance of what we are, not the mind, not anything beyond that, just the physical and the energetic. They're, they're the two most undeniable parts of, of our own existence. What they create when they come together, that's the winning. That's where we become one and W-O-N or one uh, O-N-E, whatever you want to call it, that's where we have actually won because we are bringing together all of those particular parts and that's where we start to create a rally. That's where life starts. Everything we're doing in opposition before we get to that particular point means that we have to wait for other people to change. We have to inflict our judgments and hold on to those judgments on why they are wrong and why they are right, why I'm left, why I'm right, why I'm good or bad, because we're maintaining this particular cohesion of opposition to life. That's where the ego has been created, which is ultimately the sum total of the mind of all the information that's been collected over time that sits there. So when we are choosing to be disconnected or disintegrated in our own life, and, and I would challenge any, it's a choice to be that way because the native state is integration. We've actually forced ourselves to be disintegrated because when we are integrated, what we express and what we become is unusual. It's, un, it's what some people would consider unnatural. And... And, and a real important part of all of this is, to me, we, we, we've complicated it so much by focusing on the opposition, on what's wrong so that we can be right, rather than realising it doesn't matter what we do, it doesn't matter how or where we become, we're going to fall over. All we need to understand how to do is to get back to that integrated state. And so that, that's a, a two to three second practice. But it becomes an autonomic practice where it requires no effort when we start to understand not pure wisdom, not when we start to understand great depth and insight of philosophy from the past, because if we are still constructed in this opposition to our own self, no amount of information is ready to be received. The first thing we need to liberate is that disconnection, is the choice to be disconnected, is the opposition to what we are. And that's why the study of the ego, and some people call it shadow work, 
Um, but you know, there's, there's many, you know, marketing's provided a whole range of great things to capture people's attention. But ultimately, <clears throat> our life is going to be enriched by the, um, by, by the navigating and the liberating of our darkness. And that starts from against our opposition. But as we move into our own connection and integration, the liberation of that darkness happens in all the stuff we haven't explored. It's not something that's bad or wrong. It's like, it's the great unknown. It's, um, I don't know if we spoke about this last time, but it, but it, it's not lost on me. The, and it's, it's, it's quite interesting, this whole 1%, how it dominates the 99%. Um, you know, the, I think it's one three thousandth of 1% of the light that is available that we can actually see, not, not 1%. But one three thousandth of one percent is a possible light we can see. One eight hundredth of one percent is the is the sounds and, and the the frequencies that we can actually audibly hear. Now, that's also going to be taken into consideration that the things measuring that, well, they're they're made by man as well. So what what is it that they're not actually capable of actually recognizing and and pick up picking up upon as well? So. With such a limited capacity of what we can see, how knowledgeable we become based upon such an insignificant amount of information. So to be righteous and to be winning at any particular point, to, to know any particular truth, that can only be determined by ourselves and that courage to go into the unknown. First is to accept how much we oppose our own self, no matter how brilliant our life is, because it's in that, for me anyway, if we can start from the full acceptance of my ignorance, if we can accept that I'm starting always from my ego, we can only grow in that moment. So that's, yeah, that's sort of, I think winning is just, so just to wrap up that, is winning is just a condition of the opposition that we maintain within our own self. So the fight continues. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's... <laughs> sorry to make light of it but uh, light is in light hard in yeah no, but, it's, but it's it's true it's um the, the thing is it's um it's, it's the irony of, of our own existence is that we see the problem we want to fix it and you know i know i i um years ago i had a psychedelic experience and, and I remember being caught up in this loop in that space of um don't think oh you just thought I oh, don't think I oh, just thought I don't and it was like this thing I was never ever going to come out of and I was like okay don't think oh you just thought and it, it was just it was quite violent and you know and and really confronting and I, I I was in that moment I thought I was never coming out of it I was like how the fuck do I get out of this like I can't think but I'm not thinking to not think, and then and then it just kept going. But it made me realize after that, just our ability to actually direct our attention to ourselves for no reason at all it is our true liberation. And when we actually start to do that in that silence, then we start to see what is real. Then we start to exist with ourselves, not giving myself attention because I'm sick, not giving myself attention because I'm sad not giving myself attention because I need more money or resources or whatever it may be, but the practice over time of giving myself attention for no reason at all. You know, and, and some, I think it's, I might be quoting it wrong, but it, it might be Ram Dass sort of seen through someone is, is to become nobody, you know, and, and that sounds like for many people because the whole idea and the pursuit is to become somebody, you know, of status. Of recognition whereas but to become nobody is where the real power is and that's in our own self of, of letting go of all of those oppositions that we've created for our own self that as we move forward well there's the pitfall and as we move forward well there's the problems those things that, that they don't exist they only exist in when we're in a disconnected disintegrated state because they're a condition of our choice and if they continue to keep happening it's not to say, no, I've done the work. No, I've got there. Well, the evidence is there. If I keep opposing my own growth going forward, well, I don't need to fix that. I just need to be aware, well, I'm just integrated from the, the truth of what I am. So all I need to do is get back into that other stream, get up on that other channel, 
I didn't realize someone's changed the channel. Oh, okay, we'll have the humility to go, right, that's where I need to be. Because we can connect to any ethereal master or ascension or whatever we want to give pros to. But if we're doing it from a disconnected state, we will receive information that will provide us and maintain us in that disconnected state. It's our responsibility as individuals to choose where we exist. Your soul and the inherent wisdom within it is not sitting there counting down the time and thinking time's running out. It's timeless. It's not sitting there going, come on, you've got to hurry up. We've got to get there. We've got to get on that train. It doesn't work that way. It's of no concern or consequence or emotional concern as to whether you actually get it in this lifetime. It's not concerned by a vaccine. It's not concerned by a government mandate. It's not concerned by the game that's been played out in front of you. It's there for its own wisdom and realisation and the attention that only you can provide it. But, you know, like, like anything that comes through us in our imagination, it can be most beautiful and brilliant and significant to, to this entire existence that we live in. But without our physical capacity, that can never come into form. And, and to recognise that both of those two things, the, the absolute wisdom and intelligence that's available in an energetic space, but its reliance on the physical is none of, neither a better or worse than the other. These two things work in symmetry and one brings something into form. One is what enlivens and brings movement. When we allow those two things to happen as they do, we can start to create some amazing things in our life. But we're living, and for some people, they're living in a state of purgatory because they're choosing to do that with themselves. I want things to change, but I don't want to confront who I am. I don't want to look into the very eyes of my own existence. You know, and, and all of this that I'm saying can be confronting and it can be very challenging for everyone. But the irony is, is how simple it is. It, it's not there. It's, I think we, we, we also burden ourselves by having aspirations of what's out there. Med meditation has got a lot to answer for in, in my awareness as far as taking us to a place out there without being able to, to ground it. We've, we've fallen into this concept of ascension of, of something that's going up, but whilst our foundation upon which we stand is unstable, the foundation upon which we stand does not maintain the space in which we look to move into. It's our, and this is, you know, back to the true form of the word understanding. It's what now stands underneath us that allows us to be able to create and move forward in our own life. When, we're, when we understand something, we don't give, need to give it any more attention. It is a part of what we are. It's an integration within us. We don't need to keep confirming our wisdom. We don't need to be grateful for the way in which the world operates and exists, whether we are here or not. It has its praise. It's being created. It's expressing itself in every moment. The opportunity is now bring attention to yourself. How are you going to <coughs> enrich this environment? How are you going to create what it is that you want. And whether that's a, a farm in the hills or whether that's a skyscraper in the middle of the city, you know, that, that's for our own determination. And each one of them has its same degree of spiritual capacity within itself. It's just that individual being able to choose that without these rules of those corporates. I mean, you know, the capitalists, the communists and, and, and all the rest of it. They're... Um, I would suggest that there's, it's, there's such a great momentum that's occurring at the moment and the, the term it's darkest before the dawn. It's at that particular point, it, it's allowing ourselves to continue to keep moving through towards what is true to us individually when it seems to be most oppressed externally. Mm, it, it's interesting because sometimes I write <laughs> that this is just the beginning. Uh, I'm like, mm, it's always the beginning. It's always the end. It's, it's, it, I mean, again, it's, it's eternal. So, but mm -hmm. as, as you said, I mean, my perception is it, it potentially is going to get a lot darker. But then when I think about that, I'm like, am I manifesting this? <laughs> you know, like, is that, is that part of, uh, am I contributing to this by even thinking that it's going to get darker for, for a lot of people? Yeah, you know, and I, I, I 
struggle with that because the signs are there from what I can read, but at the same time, it doesn't, you don't need, it doesn't need to be that way. It doesn't need to be that way. But again, the darkness and the light, it all exists. We just need to accept it. And as you said, do the work on ourselves. And even that challenges me sometimes too, putting that word work into that, that, mm. that thing. I would say you don't need to do any work on yourself. Mm. Uh, that that's that to me is a, that's a big one that that's that you, you would have heard a lot yourself is that you've got to do the work i've got to do the work you know and, and even at some point saying you know it can be quite aggressively to people like stop talk just do the work on yourself like it's when you have to force something you, you're moving against it because you don't understand what you're actually moving against instead of continuing to keep pushing is go around the other side and actually see what it is that you're pushing against and go, ah, oh, I don't know, I understand that. Well, actually, I don't need to push against this. You know, it, it's it's a reaction most of the time that we're, we're playing into and it's, it's for me like that um, medicine experience of where it's just a loop that we continue to keep finding ourselves in. Um, but... You know, I, I look at the, the, the energetic and the physical and the physical is always drawing towards an end point, you know, and the energetic in its infinite capacity always is considerate and present to the starting point. And the thing is within each of us, they, they both have a role to play. But, but it's understanding what it is that, that, that dictates to me. Am I dictated to by my physical reality and my five senses? Or am I also utilising and understanding to the same degree that I can taste, touch and feel and trust those things? Do I trust my imagination to the same degree? Do I trust my intuition to the same degree? Is my intuition, which is just the interpretation of energy into information, that's only relevant to the state that I maintain within myself, the connection I have to myself. Same with my imagination. I, I can imagine many great things and have visions, but from which point is it coming from? Is it from an integrated or a disintegrated state? So, you know, for us, we don't have to do, we're, we're only having to do the work on ourselves when, you know, geez, I could go into the, but that psychology, for example, and some of those pillars of life that we've, we're being brought into. I mean, there's great psychologists that exist, but the actual function, the actual impetus behind what it exists for is, is quite dire. And if people actually understood that, that what they would start to find a truth within themselves. The, there is no work to be done. The example of going back into trauma is to realise where I am most powerful and what has influenced my life the most is when I have been most present because this trauma is so evident in my life. I am racing and chasing away from it. It is when, you know, as a young kid that I was told that I was no good. And at that moment, I've never been able to forget it and, I, and it's there with me. Or, you know, in more traumatic things that for some people is, you know, physical or sexual abuse. In that moment, they were completely there and present. And it's the presence the activation of everyone, every part of you in that moment that is powerful. But it gets confused in the trauma. If we can start to see the evidence that how do we bring ourselves into a state of presence for our own brilliance? How do we actually use that power in order to move ourselves forward, not continue to keep going back into it to try to fix it? Because what determines the past trauma to be of beauty and brilliance is how you feel and how present and integrated you are right now. That trauma is not going anywhere. Don't try to get rid of it. Release your relationship with it is a very different thing. But that trauma is a part of what makes you who you are and the very nature of the way I experience and feel myself in this moment. If I feel amazing and I am elated with my own existence, that deep trauma is the greatest thing that ever happened to me. It's the thing that brought me to this point. It's the thing that shaped me. It gave me the independence to, to move through my life. But if the next day I'm confronted by, by the very look of myself in the mirror, I am going to look at that trauma 
as the most horrific thing that occurred and I'll find misery around me and I'll find it in other people to feel sympathy for me in order to do that. But that trauma is not determined by what happened. It's what I am now that determines its truth. And presence in its own self by not trying to be present, which sounds like a bit of an oxymoron, but is simply getting rid of the relationship that we have to all the things that oppose us. When we allow ourselves to release, what we start to do is we then enable ourselves to take on anything and everything in our life because we're already aware of we can let it go at any particular point with grace. When we can gracefully release, something very amazing happens is we start to gracefully receive. And for many of us, I'd say that's a big, big issue that, you know, someone gives us something, we're, we're very predisposed to, no, 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 you keep that. No, 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 I don't need to accept that. No, 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 it's okay. I was doing it for the... Our, our inability to, to receive is also caught up in the way we are clogged up with all the things that we have not released or let go of or that we don't understand how to let go of. Energy and its freedom is, you know, life coming to us and through us, not, not to be possessed, not to be held onto, not to be restricted. All of those things only create toxicity. Water becomes toxic when it's held. Everything that is restricted in any way, a person, love, the most beautiful things in all of our life are always only going to be made toxic when they are restricted and restricted by choice or when they're held, imprisoned. But through all of us, that freedom of movement, which is, again, what, what's you know, becoming challenging in the world of people's movements seem to be restricted. But the great thing is it's bringing forward the choices that people have if they want to make them if they want to prepare, if they want to create change. But it's a big if, and it's an individual choice. <sighs> There's a big sigh. <laughs> uh, I'll do a collective sigh for everybody. Shikobas, <laughs> Shikobas just joined us for a pat too. And, uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> she knows when it's the time for, for a big release too. Jace, mate, I'm going to uh, have to re-listen to this one and watch it. And um, I thank you for your wisdom once again, my friend, and joining us on this journey of discovery and remembrance. It's always, uh, mm. always such a treat. So thank you, my friend. I love you, brother. Love you too, Pete. And thank you. Thank you again so much. It's, um, I had no idea what we're going to go through today, but it's, um, yeah, I love the space that you're creating and the example that you provide. It's um, beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, legend.